PDX, the show about business, technology, and creativity in the Bridge City. I'm Haley Platt. Today's guests are Doug Little from Wacom and legendary shoe designer and founder of Portland's Pencil Design Academy, Duane Edwards. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks Thank for being you. here. Yeah. Um, so we're going to go back and forth here with our conversation, but Doug, I want to start with you. I understand you have a really impressive brand new headquarters building here in the Pearl. So tell me a little bit about the motivation and vision behind it. Sure. Well, uh, Wacom has been a company that's been in existence for a very long time. So we were founded in uh, Tokyo, Japan mm -hmm. uh, back in 1983. Wa actually is an interesting uh, word. It comes from the Japanese word wa for harmony and then com for computer. So okay. our mantra is uh, harmony between humans and technology. That's what we do. Um, Wacom has been designing pen tablets and creative pen displays for many, many years. And um, we were in the uh, Vancouver area for 27 years. Wow. So we were uh, in Vancouver since 1989. And about, uh, oh, probably, oh, about eight or nine years ago, we went through a rebranding process and uh, just wanted to update our brand, make it more modern, make it re more relative to what we're doing in the uh, creative community. And uh, that's what brought us to Portland. So right. um, we're in a new building on 1455 Northwest Irving, a uh, nine-story building, we're on the top three floors, nine, eight, and seven, and then we have an experience center down on the ground floor where people will be able to come and try out our gear, we'll have seminars, classes, we'll bring in, um, you know, creative talent. Yep. People like D. Wayne, <laughs> sure. during Design Week, we uh, did this really cool uh, program with D. Wayne where we uh, brought in um, some designers, shoe designers from the local community, Keen, Adidas, Nike, cool. et cetera. And it was just a blast. So do you think that that's going to attract new talent to Wacom? Definitely, yeah. definitely. I mean, that, that was one of the reasons for our move here is not only to get closer to the creative community, which Northwest definitely has. Um, uh, it was definitely a, a, a situation where we wanted to get into a place where we're in the Silicon Forest, deep into it, sure. and we're able to attract more talent. Right. Well, so speaking of talent, Duane, you've... You know, you use Wacom to design. What, in your sure. opinion, makes Wacom so special? Uh, to me, it makes it special because I'm I'm very old school right. in, in the sense that I've I've grown up using uh, pencil and paper, mm -hmm. and I, I didn't want to use a computer initially when I was when I started because I didn't like the point and click process of have, having a mouse and having to look at the monitor and do well, those things. Away from it, it takes away a lot of the, the visual intimacy of the process sure. of being able to hold something and doing something with your hands until the Wacom products came and I could basically transfer the same process from pencil and paper to a pen and, and monitor. Then, it, then I was embracing the technology sure. only because I, I loved having something in my hand to, to play with. Uh, I guess it's a bit like a smoker where you have to have a cigarette in your fingers to feel comfortable, but um, I don't smoke. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but to it's me, a good analogy. It's, I mean, I understand it's, what you're it's saying. It's security, Con sure. quite honestly. It's security sure. to have something in my hand to hold and then being able to personally make the lines move. Right. You've been with Wacom for how long then, Duane? I've been using the products for over 15 years. 15 years, okay. Yeah. And you've been there for about 12 or... What? I was, uh, yeah, so we got you guys are buddies through, through a colleague okay. of mine who works in our consumer division. And... Um, Ironically, uh, he was in Houston. So he was in Houston at a sneaker store. Okay. And the guy who owns a sneaker store is a friend of mine. And he was like, hey, have you ever heard of Pencil? And he was like, no, well, what is it? We're like 20 minutes away from each other, but he had to go. He was all the way in Houston to find out some, about someone who was so close by. This was a really natural relationship because we used the product. Yeah. So it wasn't like it was forced. It wasn't like a planted, you know, oh, here's a Coke can right here. Um, it was very natural. Right. And even like the video sense. was very natural because um, the students were doing it anyway. We just turned the camera on. <laughs> yeah, and when, and when we did the thing at Design Week, it was it was awesome because yeah, all of his fun. students are now pros. These were yeah. all professional uh, yeah. uh, designers, and they all came in. They all knew our product. They all knew the software applications, and they just yeah. did some really cool designs, and it was yeah. a blast. It was fun. It was fun. You just shared with us how Wacom's uh, tablets have made your job easier, right? Yeah. It makes designing easier. Yeah. Um, but so what other things um, does Wacom do? Yeah, well we, well, we make a variety of products for both consumer and uh, high-end professionals. Um, 
We make um, uh, styluses for use with an iPad, for example. Um, we make um, tablets for enthusiasts or hobbyists. So it, it's much easier to use, use a pencil than it is a mouse. Sure. Um, a mouse can be very constrained and um, it can cause really injury. I mean, it really can. I mean, using a pencil is just, or a stylus is just so much easier. Sure. We, we've done so much over the years and, uh, you know, we have our, we have our Intuos product, we have our uh, Cintiq product, which is our creative pen displays that uh, Dwayne yeah. uses mm -hmm. at his studio. And uh, these are now found everywhere. So any animated movie you've yeah. seen is all created on, on Wacom devices. And that, that makes us so proud to be able to yeah. be a part of that. Yeah. Well, you're They're making like digital paper. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's, it's just, it's genius. And I, it's like, it sort of makes creativity happen more easily. I mean, I have a feeling, right? Yeah, it does make it a whole lot easier, especially for someone who who's learning the, the technology because I grew up differently. Sure. Where the kids now, they're growing up with the right. Wacom tablets. Right. And you mentioned, you, you talked about innovation. And one of the things that I wanted to talk to you both about, really, I mean, so the pace of innovation, right? I mean, it's picked up a lot. In, uh, yeah. in recent years. But so what about inspiration and design? Do you, I mean, will the pace of that continue to change and evolve as well? Yeah, I think so. Um, the, the cool thing about um, the digital era is it allows you to, to do things that you could never do before. Sure. I mean, you can communicate faster, you can produce things quicker. Um, for example, if I have somebody that I want to send something to who's in another country, right. I can do it immediately. He or she can make comments, send them back to me. So it's just the way, it's the, the speed and, and feasibility of technology is, is really, really cool. That, right. that, that's what's the neatest thing about what we do. Right. Yeah. And what do you think about yeah. as far as inspiration and design and, and, and following that pace that we have You have here? to keep up. Yeah. I mean, I, I love that point because I think as a designer, it keeps you sharp. Mm -hmm. If you're constantly looking for new things at points of inspiration and contact. Um, I, I, I was doing a talk a few days ago and I was talking to some younger kids in the room and, and I was like, you know, believe it or not, like a long time ago, we would get a book in the mail that told us what was on TV. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I remember so, that. Right? Right? Yes. So then, you know, you're now, aging us all. Yes. Now. You know. <laughs> yeah. But it's like you know, they were like, "What? Yeah. What, what do you mean? You had to wait for a book?" Yeah. I'm like, yes. But now you can just flip yeah. the screen and you see it. And and you know, even that experience is evolving. To now, you can buy things that you see on TV. Before it was just a commercial, and you have to go to the store or jump online. Now you can physically buy it from television. So I think the the innovation is is going at such a fast rate that as a creator you have to stay on top of it because you you have no choice but to to stay sharp at your craft and you know just as a creative too you know your geography is no longer your prisoner you know you have you have your digital outlets and you know now you almost have no excuse not to be as creative as you possibly can be well i want to shift gears a bit and and talk specifically about portland mm -hmm. um and doug I'd, I'd love for i'm curious i'd love for you to tell me what you would um, what you would say about the health, the overall health of the Portland business and technology community? Oh, I think it's I think it's extremely healthy. Um, it's it's just great. First of all, to to come down to a town that is uh, so vibrant. Sure. And, uh, yeah, things active. are happening in the Pearl. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, there's so much going on. And clean uh, air too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And from LA. So. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So just just for example, just being so close to Dwayne now, we're we're already seeing Dwayne. More than yes. we saw, yeah. <laughs> we've, we've seen him more in the past month than we've seen him in like ten years. Sure. Yeah. So uh, it's it's been great. So yeah. the the ability to um, uh, be so close to so many technical and design companies is just going to make uh, Wacom even more special. Right. Well, as you know, you just said you're originally from California, yeah. but you've been in Portland for sixteen years. sixteen years, right? Yeah. So. Uh, you know, what do you think it is that draws people to Portland and then, then keeps them here? You know, I, I can tell you what drew me here and what kept me here. Well, obviously what drew me here was Nike. Right. But what kept me here was the people, right. quite honestly, um, and, and the environment and the creativity that's in such close proximity. If, you, if you've ever been to California, you know you have to drive everywhere. Uh -huh. Oh, I live <laughs> where, in L.A. too. <laughs> okay. So there's, there's no walking but yeah. to your car. Sure. And from your car. Yeah. Where here, what I love about it is everything's within a, a square mile or two, if you, especially if you're down downtown Portland in the creative area that we're yeah, we in. We both walked here today. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we, we equally did it from different directions, but we, we got here. But what, what I love about Portland is the small 
the small, you know, kind of centric zone of creativity that's here. I mean, I, I, I challenge any city in America to have the same amount of talent in the short distance that exists in this city. Right. And we're, we're, because we're so far north, um, people don't know that there's this much creativity. I know, here. but sh- I know, I know. That's kind of a that's the yeah. Don't want to say too much, right. but we also don't want to tell people about the weather. Correct. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be real rainy tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. It's, it's gonna suck tomorrow. Yeah. Um, but you know, but I, I want to. So on one half, I want to talk about it. The other half, I don't. I, I want to talk about it because I'm tired of Portlandia sure. being the representation of this city, and I know there's so much more right. than in, in this city. There's so much creativity coming out of here than any other city. Right. Well, so you know, I asked him about business and and technology here in Portland. But so let's talk to you about just creativity in Portland. What does that look like for you? Oof. Well, I mean, if you take just my industry, we've had several companies that do not have head bases here move here, specifically because they need to hire talent, and the talent wasn't going to move. Mm -hmm. So they moved here, where I think that's a huge kind of, uh, that should say something for the city and the talent pool that's here. If you had these major corporations, billion-dollar corporations, saying, okay, (laughs) we'll, we'll bow down and come to you where that's why other people are moving here as well, because there's a talent pool of people who are working at these bigger institutions that are leaving, like myself, sure. and opening up their own businesses, opening up their do- own design firms, or opening up their own companies, where it's just this, this foster creativity. It feels, like, it feels like a big city, but it's really, really small, right. um, because it's big in numbers, but the people I mean, the people are is so concentrated in one small area, and, and what I love about it being the opposite of LA, no one like brags and flaunts, and everyone speaks, and yeah. you know everything's really understated here. I mean, where where we're located, like you couldn't even see where we are unless you were right on the front of our doorway because we have no outside signage. But right across the street from us is Airbnb, and right across the street from us is the Ace Hotel headquarters, and then um, Uniqlo's headquarters, and there's no signage. Hey, Duane and Doug, thank you so much for being here today and sharing your insights. Yes, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. And that concludes this episode of Output PDX. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.